the only time I've ever seen a screaming match in a meeting, it was over naming conventions. Yeah. And, uh, and so, like, we, we get so bogged down in the, in the minutiae yeah. of things that we don't give the important things enough focus. Right. So what's your, uh, obviously, we both kind of work for these companies that, like you mentioned, have larger enterprise focus on, like, it's Dell or it's Equinix doing whatever data or big network or metal provisioning like. But what is the uh, what's the angle that like folks are, are still consuming this but wanting to make these digital changes? Like, how do you see this position like on the edge of, of both kind of both those things? Right. Like, I think we both sort of uniquely say there's there's an interesting thing. Like, I feel like I feel like you've got bifurcated concerns. Yeah. One is the traditional legacy customer who's trying to move forward into modern software development practices, right? Uh, for a lot of reasons. And, and and they're being pushed to do so because as they hire their junior people and move them up, these junior people are cloud native. They don't yeah, sure. know VMware. They don't know, you know, a hypervisor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, these things are not things they've ever worked with, because why would they? Right? If you tell someone, oh I need you to, I need you to, to fire up an, an RDP, right? And to like I need to remote into this Windows server and click, 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 click. They're going to look at you like you're speaking a different language. Like, who does that anymore, right? Um, sure. But a lot of companies still do. And so that modernization is going to be critical for them to be able to hire the talent they have going forward. That steady march of progress, they can't resist that, right? Yeah, right. On the other side of the token, you have customers who were born in the cloud, have mm -hmm. always been in the cloud, have only worked dev DevOps uh, environments, and only dealt with cloud native tools and cloud, cloud uh, hyperscalers, right? They're used to having managed services that do this and that, and this and that, and for whatever reason, almost always financial, right? They want to move some of their assets into a data center, right? Into, into an on-prem cloud. And so you, for them, you have to give them a whole different set of tools because they're used to yeah. having a cloud experience and they want to have that cloud experience even in uh, you know, on-prem like that. Yeah, yeah. And so how you speak to them about how to manage their infrastructure as if it was in a cloud, but it's on-prem, is completely different than how you're going to talk to someone who is trying, who's always been on-prem and trying to either treat their on-prem like cloud baby steps at a time or move into a, a, a hybrid cloud environment, right? Yeah. And still be able to, to not have to mo maintain multiple tool sets to interact sure. with their infrastructure. It's funny, it just, it, it comes down to like other conversations having earlier about like, it's why this value of these roles are like being, just be at these events or being in the community and actually talking to folks, like you have to have the understanding of where people are coming from, the breadth of experience to like, realize there are two different challenges, the different experiences that people are going from with like, Absolutely. we're working towards the same thing with the angles in which you approach it, how you interact with folks, it's very different too, it, so. I think it's interesting because like, when you take somebody who's seasoned in the industry and you mm -hmm. say like, hey, we'd actually need to move in this direction and you tell them, well, you know, you got to skill up and stuff like that. The worst thing you can do is give them a Kubernetes beginner's thing because you infantilize <laughs> them. You treat them like sure, they sure, don't sure. know anything, right? Yeah, yeah. We don't really have a good, uh, um, we don't really have a good, good syllabus, or a good, uh, uh, you know, kind of set of, of tutorials based on people who ninety nine percent know what they're doing. Yeah. We just need to give. We just need to relate this concept of that concept and give them the analogs that way, right? Those are, those are, those are tough things to write too, right? Like very I find myself in that where it's very much, it's almost in a corner of learning that requires a, 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 a interaction with the other person, right? To kind right. of judge the like, oh, I see where the gaps are. Like you've got it 85%, like here's the things that you're missing, right? The word you're looking for is empathy. <laughs> right, which is hard to write the guides, right? Like you can't really write the, the uh, empathetic guides to uh, no, the how to learn it is, you can You can emulate empathy for sure, right? Sure. Yeah. Uh, and with, with some level of efficiency and some level of accuracy, but that's when we get back to it, talking about the human, the human aspect, like right? really understanding people, really understanding what their motivations, what their needs are, right? Yeah. Um, we call that when you amalgamate it all into one role of person, we call that leadership. <laughs>